Hi everyone, Thursday, let's see, the 22nd of April. Good to be with you. As promised, we're in the parable of the sheep and the goats. Again, uh, a quintessential parable, many of us know this uh, when it comes to the kingdom of God and uh, what it looks like and um, what Jesus envisions in terms of the apocalypse, the the second coming, the second advent, we might say, but oftentimes misunderstood. Remember yesterday, we talked a little bit about this understanding that God sends people to hell. Well, the sheep and the goats really kind of gets at that a little bit more, um, I think, specifically. And and, and with better theology, as if we understand it appropriately. So Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Okay, so we start with this. This is clearly the second coming of Jesus. And it's going to be a coming that's different, an advent that's different than the first coming. Jesus came in humble, uh, subversive almost, means in the manger. But this time, he's going to come differently. It will be in glory. It will be with the heavenly hosts, the angels. And he will sit at the same time on this glorious throne, much different than the first coming. Verse 32, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a good shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Now, we have to be careful here that we don't ascribe to Jesus too much. So many, many, not many, I would say, but some, um, but it seems like many, some theologians, I would say, but many preachers get this wrong. This great separation, if you think about it, is already a separation that has left Jesus with no other choice. See, this is the point here, and we'll get to this uh, in terms of its development further, but there are already sheep and there are already are goats. Jesus isn't making some sheep and others goats. But sometimes we preach this, and what we preach, or maybe even it's what we hear, is that Jesus is separating some as sheep and some as goats. But Jesus doesn't determine if they're sheep or goats. That would be erroneous for us to think about this parable in that way. But many do. And I want you to think about this parable, too. Have you been doing this? Have you been thinking in your mind, maybe it's subconscious even, that the separating that the shepherd will do is because of the shepherd's sovereignty, that somehow the shepherd is making somebody a sheep or designating them so, or designating or making someone a goat? No, there are already sheep and there are already goats. Okay, that's important to remember. Now, verse 34. So though, though the shepherd separates, the sheep and the goats are already what they are. 34. Then the king will say to those on the right, come you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Okay, there's our word kingdom, the basileia in the Greek. He will say to those on his right, and they happen to be sheep. Not because Jesus made them sheep or sorted them that way. No, they sheep are on the right. That's just who they are. And they will enter now their inheritance. Let me say that differently, just to be clear. They will not enter. Um, I believe the sheep have already entered. But they will now take in its fulfillment, better said, their inheritance the kingdom that was prepared since the, since the creation of the world. This is the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. So they will take it in its fullness, maybe. That's better said. We've already been living as sheep in the kingdom. And by the way, we already know that sheep are those 
who are in Christ Jesus. That's how they were sorted. Sheep, goats. You are already a Christian. You're already in Christ Jesus, or you're not the goats, those who are not in Christ Jesus. But remember, the shepherd only separates them already by what they are. And now the king is saying to them, not because of where they are, one on the right, one in the left, that's not accurate, but because of what they are. Sheep, this is what you get. Goats, this is what you get. And then verse 35 helps us to understand what a sheep looks like. Verse 35, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. This is what a sheep looks like. It's already a sheep. These aren't the innate characteristics of it. This isn't what a sheep is. This is what a sheep has done. And the sheep has done this because they're sheep. It's because the doing has come out of their being. So we think as Christians, well, we have to do these things. We have to do more. Mm, not really. If we are in Christ Jesus, we will do these things. Jesus said, a tree will be known by its fruit. All the king is talking about is the fruit of the tree or the characteristics of the life a sheep lives because they are truly in Christ Jesus. Okay, verse 37, then the righteous will answer him. So we know these are Christians because they're deemed righteous before God. God's the king, of course. Jesus is the shepherd. Sheep are Christians. Goats are not. They are righteous. Why? Because of the imputed righteousness of Christ. Christ has covered our sins and made us right with God. So then the, we get a better understanding of the, the characteristic of the sheep. See, the, this is verse 37 is what the sheep is. Verses 35 and 36 is what the sheep has done because that's what sheep do. Okay. Lord, when did you see, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? See, the reality is, is that we live in a world where Jesus is present by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is uh, present in creation. Jesus is present in the elements of communion. Jesus is present in the body of Christ. But most of the time, that is not a presence that we can see. Jesus says, uh, blessed are those who don't see and believe. And so, those sheep who are in Christ Jesus, who are made righteous because of the forgiveness of sins by grace through faith, say, when did we see you? When did, we, when did that happen? And now the king will reply, God the Father, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. The king says, if you've done it for humanity, if you've done it for those who are created in my image and likeness, you have done it to me. Verse 41, here's the second group then. Then they will say, then he, the king, will say to those on his left, now who are these? These are the goats. They have been sorted, separated, because of what they already are. Jesus hasn't said, you're goats and you're sheep. No, we, by our choices, by grace through faith, have become sheep, uh, sheep or goat when we make the negative response to the gospel. Verse 41, then he will say, the king, to those on his left, depart from me, you who are, who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, number one, those who are cursed, why are they cursed? Did the shepherd curse them? Did the shepherd make them goats? Did Jesus say you will be cursed? No, we think that sometimes. And there are even pastors who preach it, but it's not true. 
They're cursed because they have not received the gospel, the good news of salvation by grace through faith. That's it. They don't have the imputed righteousness upon them, do these goats. That's why they're cursed. They don't enter into the kingdom. Why? Because they haven't already been living in it. That's what we talked about yesterday. You see, we make our choices today to live in the kingdom or not in the kingdom. And all God does by the work of Jesus is separates us into our groups of who we already are and then allow us to live out those consequences. So you are cursed and now into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Guess what? The devil and his angels also chose against God. That's all we're talking about here. Those who choose against God. Verse 42. So what do, what have these then not, what do these goats, what haven't they done? Again, these are, they're not who they are. This is the outcome of, of who they are, their works. Verse 42, when I was hungry and gave me nothing to eat, I was thirsty and gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. These are the ones who have not lived like Jesus. <laughs> These are the ones who have not taken the gospel to heart. These are the ones by the nature of who they are, worldly, not in Christ Jesus, they have lived according to the world. And it's not because, by the way, they've lived according to the world. This is, again, something that we often get wrong. It's not because they haven't lived according to the world. It's because they're goats. <laughs> by nature, they have, they have not taken on the nature of Christ. The sheep have, and you will know then them by their fruit. The goats have not, and we also know them by their fruit. But it's not because they didn't do these things that they are cursed. No, they are cursed because God looks at them, not through the righteousness of Christ, but through the cursedness of our own human sin and humanity itself. Then verse 44, they will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, stranger, needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? See, this isn't the point. Jesus is simply saying to them in verse 45, then, he will reply, the king, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of this, these, you did not do for me. But the question is, why didn't they do it? The answer is not because of the works themselves. No, they didn't do it because they didn't have the righteousness of Christ imputed upon them. They weren't living in the kingdom. They were living in the world. And so we know these goats also then by their fruit. And these sound like subtle little changes or nuances. No, they're huge. The fact that we are sheep and we are goats, that God doesn't make us sheep or make us goats, that we are simply sorted and then get to receive what we've already been living, those in righteousness, the kingdom, those accursed, hell and its fires, figuratively, of course. I mean, hell is real, but its fires, I don't know. <laughs> a way for us to uh, understand hell is uh, not, a, not a place of uh, comfort and love and God's uh, grace and peace. And then verse 46, they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So, that brings us full circle. This is what God is talking about. This is what Jesus is trying to communicate to the disciples. I love this parable of the sheep and goats, but it has to be interpreted correctly. There's been a lot of concern and consternation over this particular text. And I think it's because we are attributing to God and the person of Jesus Christ as God, as condemning one or the other to eternal life, and then one or the other to eternal punishment. But that's not what's happening here, and I hope you can see it. Sit with this text, consider what I've talked about, call, email, text, whatever. I'd love to talk to you about this further. Remember, friends, theology matters. Let's pray. God, thanks for the gift of your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. That those of us who are 
in you who have claimed the gospel as our own by faith through your grace we're, we're so grateful that now we can be called righteous not of our own doings of course but because of your work bless us lord as we anticipate the eternal life that is to come the fulfillment of the kingdom and lord for those who are goats today we pray it would not be always help us to be bold in our proclamation of your gospel that these might become sheep, giving their lives to you in faith. Lord, thanks for your understanding. Thanks, Holy Spirit, that you are our advocate and our helper. Help us to understand your word, that we might live in your image, Lord Jesus. We pray it in your name. Amen. Again, passionate about this parable, because I think in many cases, we've gotten it wrong. We got to get this right, friends, so that we can truly preach the gospel of grace and love for all people. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.